Latinos, the, the Latin community, they don't move as a fragmented race and culture. That's why they own everything. That's why they buying up all of the businesses. The Asian community, they don't move as a fragmented culture. That's why they buying up everything. Now white people got that same blueprint. And yet, this is what's scary boys and girls. We are the most powerful, influential race, period. Not by net worth, not by politics, culture. You know how many things has been done to us to beat the shit out of this smile and I'm still smiling. Yo, it's Geek That Reacts, right back where you at, man. Have a coming to you with my co-host, Guy Rome. Ah, I'm Guy Rome, man. I'm bullshitting, man. We got Juju and Q here in the studio with me today. You know I be fucking up sometimes, man. But we got another hot video for you, as always. Listen, before we do that, I want to give y'all that love and support for giving this, giving it back to us. You know what I'm saying? Y'all really going up in them comments, likes, sharing, subscribing. So appreciate y'all, man. But... As always, like I said, another high video. We got Tyrese. He was on Club Shay Shay. And I ain't gonna lie to you. This was actually one of my... I listened to the whole interview. This is actually a good interview. I definitely did fuck with it. But, you know, as crazy as Tyrese being in the news, talking that, that shit, doing that crazy <laughs> shit, he might have been dropping some jewels on this one. He might have been. You know what I'm saying? He might have been. Okay. He was talking about the fra how fragmented the black community is in, when it, in comparison to other you know, ethnic groups. So we're going to see what he was talking about. Y'all going to see. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the content. Let's get it popping. Would you agree or disagree that physically on earth there's more black people than the overall Jewish community? Yes or no? Talking about if you were born and raised Jewish, mm -hmm. are there more physical people a part of the Jewish community than the overall black community in numbers? Yeah. Yes or no? I would probably say there's probably more black when you look at Af the continent of Africa. Yeah, the whole world. Yeah. I would say yes. Yes. See, they got their shit together. Community working with each other, doing dinners every Friday, putting the phone down and discussing the chess moves and the play. See, us as black people, we're fragmented. You can't do nothing fragmented. Can't do nothing jealous and envious. Now, this is not gonna go viral because I got a Jewish daughter, so relax. Latinos, the, the Latin community, they don't move as a fragmented race and culture. That's why they own everything. That's why they buying up all of the businesses. The Asian community, they don't move as a fragmented culture. That's why they buying up everything. Now white people got that same blueprint. And yet, this is what's scary boys and girls. We are the most powerful influential race, period. Not by net worth, not by politics, culture. You know how many things has been done to us to beat the shit out of this smile and I'm still smiling. The resilience of black culture after every attempt to kill and I literally get rid of us, wipe us off the face of the fucking earth. And we still smiling, still in the videos dancing, still influencing what they're wearing, what they're doing, what they're, what they're, what the direction that they're deciding to move in. We're not watching them the way they watching us, but they got their shit together. So they always going to win. Very, you know that's very interesting right there. Tyrese, very interesting. Um, what you think? Honestly, and this is just, just this is just conversations that I've been having with with my dukes, you know what I'm saying, just based off of uh ethnic groups and cultures and things like that. I do believe there's a little bit of validity validity in what he's saying as far as um 
the fragmentation of our culture and our community. And I say that to say, like, we're the only community, I believe, that is um, so, whether it be arrogant or cocky to move out by 18, or get our own or or just have parents that's, you know what I'm saying, ready to, to just put you out into the world and do things of your own because you you just want to go, you know, go figure it out for yourself and things like that. But when you look at other communities, regardless of how niggas talk about Hispanics, being however many numbers in a crib or in a car, they don't push them kids out and, and everything like that until they're ready to go into society and have, you know what I'm saying, something of their own. Nope. A family, housing, business. Um, look at Asians. Them niggas got all types of shit. Wing spots, you know what I'm saying, convenience stores and little things, beauty supply, uh, Indians, niggas got gas stations and things like that. I know they got, you know what I'm saying, a lot more different, you know what I'm saying, ventures and things like that but i'm just saying that to say other cultures like what he's speaking about they they have a difference on how they go about uh unity within themselves and you know making sure that the kids are ready and that the family is ready to go out on their own and pursue their own family and life and and, and business endeavors and things like that and like i said I, I i definitely agree a little bit to what he's saying as far as that aspect of the the culture differences between African Americans and others, yeah, Thanks. go ahead. I, I would agree. I don't think that I, I wouldn't say that he's wrong at all. Ironically enough, though, as much as there's memes about the gentleman on the internet, this is a perfect conversation for Doctor Umar right here because this this what he's talking about is true. He's not wrong. He's actually reading the room properly. But through all of that reading of that, there's not really a hot take, honestly. And to be honest with you, we kind of need to get to the point of like finding solutions and cures. So we need to get to the root of what it is that he's talking about, why we're like this and why other people are, aren't like this. And it's not because we, we're just ignorant niggas who can't get along. I think he answered his own question towards the end of his uh, whole speech there, which was the whole point about us being enslaved and tortured and really uh, mentally and spiritually and physically being ripped apart for generations upon generations. I yeah. wonder what that would do to people's psyche <laughs> when you're pitted against each other and things like that. No wonder we can't get along and those other groups can because I don't know any of those other groups who have a history like our history is. So when I hear things like yeah. that, this is where Dr. Umar comes in because to fix what he's talking about, we're going to need like a mass group of psychologists to go descend upon the black community and start unlearn teaching and uh, helping people unlearn some shit. Cause it's beyond just niggas got to stop being niggas. This goes way deeper than that, but he's not wrong in his diagnosis. He's absolutely right on how he's reading the room. Facts. Nah, that's shit. I was going to say the same shit, man. I was going to say the same shit. Really? It, it comes down to matter of fact, I'm, I'm bringing it all the way down to this, yo. When you, it's like, yo, it's like when you, when you find out your man's done snitched on you, right? You went out for some shit, you find out your closest man's done snitched on you. And I'm, I'm bringing that analogy up because you got to think about, like how you said, we pitted against each other. We was pitted against each other from the time that slavery started. We had, we had our own people working with, with the man, like. Trying to selling, enslave selling and bring us on the boat, like setting, us, setting us up. So, like you said, psychologically, like from a mental standpoint, you're sitting here like, I, I, I don't, I don't understand why I can't trust you, or why I just automatically got these trust issues, or I really can't. I don't feel like mm-hmm. I can really build with you, or I'm like hating on you is because, like, like you said, generationally, that shit has been passed down, like in some way, shape, or form, as the times have gone on. It's been passed down. It's, it's adopted the new ages of time. You know what I'm saying? Before we were saying you because it was like actual like hate behind it. Like, oh, I just don't like you. You know what I'm saying? I don't like this. And you know, I'm gonna do this to you. Now it's man, that nigga shit fake, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't, even, I don't know this nigga, but <laughs> yeah. that nigga shit fake. That shit right. fake, nigga. So, what's wrong? You think you got? You think you get? You think you like that nigga? You know what I'm saying? That's that's the kind of like mentality that gets passed down. You know what I'm saying? And it is unknowing. Cause we not we not thinking we not thinking about that, but you like you said, it's gonna take a group of psychologists, 
It's going to take a lot of people that, that you know, that's well rooted in, in that type of culture or that type of history, I should say, rather to be able to kind of break it down from a factual standpoint. And you know what I'm saying? So it's this nigga. He got me geeking. You know, he always doing yeah, so. He be tired, some serious shit and then go into so some funny, funny yeah, stuff. He is so <laughs> funny, bro. I wanted to also Funny add shit. a quote that I heard from, I forget her first name, so forgive me, but it was Dr. Bryant. I, I, she said it, though, and I... She oh, was oh yeah. With, uh, forget her first name. Cam but Newton. She, yeah, she was speaking with Cam Newton, and I loved when she said it because it's a great way. I love when things that aren't tangible are able to be expressed in ways that people who maybe don't believe in it would actually yeah. kind of consider it. And one of the things she said was like, well, you're 6'5", Cam Newton. <laughs> Somebody in your family wasn't short. Somebody had to be tall for this thing to be passed down through your bloodline for you to be tall like this. Do you think the height and physical elements are the only things you inherited from these people? Exactly. Just, just physical exactly. things. That's all you inherited. No, no personality traits. No uh, ways of thinking. No, no, none of that. You just, I'm tall because my dad's tall, and that's all I got from him. It's a lot exactly. deeper than that. But people got to really yeah. acknowledge that. And, and you know what? And to the uh, to the fact of what he was saying of of the other ethnic groups that do kind of stick together in that regard, man. And I can speak to this personally because you know, for the last couple of years, y'all listen, I've been a minority in in where I live. Uh, it's a, it's a lot of Hispanic niggas uh, around here. You know what I'm saying? I'm the minority here. <laughs> I'm in yeah. Baltimore. I'm <laughs> oh. the minority here. You know what I'm saying? Where I live at. They send the emails out in right. English and Spanish because they know they, they know that most of that <laughs> more than half the niggas around here don't know that English. They, they're not gonna be so able to I say that, me. <laughs> say that to say I'm I'm peeping it every single day, man. The unity, man. It's just like and it it, it go even deeper than that, yo. Just you can just see the cultural difference of I treat I'm treating every single day as not only like I'm glad to have a day, but just the opportunity. Like just the, mm-hmm. the opportunity of, of that each to each and every day presents, you know what I'm saying? To be able to wake up. And that shit is real humbling, yo. Like you it it make you say and think like, damn, yo, like you really start to think like, man, I really am a product of my environment. Like I'm I'm sitting here around people right. that just like wake up every single day, like, man, we just trying to make it to the next day. But these niggas is like, man, I'm so thankful for the next day. That shit gonna get me to the next day. Like that's how they treating it. But we just waking up like, oh shit. Yo, we we here today? Shit. I hey fuck it. We're gonna do the same shit we did yesterday because I mean, you know what I'm saying? Nah, dummy. No, yeah, just, homie. why not? Nah, I would, I would say tomorrow. Just, just quick to add on to what you and Q were saying on the I would say the psychological warfare that our community faces. We yeah. I'm pretty sure, you know, we've all heard uh stories of that either our parents have told or our friends' parents have told to them as far as when they wanted to move out the house at an early age and, and things like that of that nature. Mm-hmm. And when you realize you really look back, you know, it's generational. It's it's going down from past to present. You know what I'm saying? From you know what I'm saying person to person. And and I think that like you were saying, that mindset that we're, you know, kind of get stuck in as far as just having our own individuality and wanting to just make for ourselves and things like that, go ahead and rush out the house, rush out the crib or whether you might be being pushed out the crib by parents and things like that. I think that's, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I think that's other, I think that's a conversation that other communities don't have. I would say, I mean, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I, I can't really speak personally per se, but just given on the outside looking in, given, you know, nine, 10 motherfuckers shacked up in a crib up until they like 20, 30, you know what I'm saying? Like, regardless of what they do, them people, they go out, they have a business, they have a career set, they, they're they ready to, you know what I'm saying, be of their own into society and things like that. But, you know what I'm saying, just a little bit to add, but I, I don't think, you know, when it comes to the black community, that we really stand firm on that that togetherness, so to speak. You know, it's it's, it's more situational as, as opposed to business and real life in, you know, in in-game type ideas. It's situational, really, in that aspect of the situation is we just would not know until it's ignorant to us. It's ignorant to us because we are literally born into it. And when 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 you think about like 
because when you're from a different country, when you come over here, especially matter of fact, like for example, if you're Japanese, right? You come over mm-hmm. to America, you know what I'm saying? You are you're given a certain amount because of certain historical events that have happened, you know what I'm saying, that allow us to be say, oh, these are essentially, you know, your reparations, right? For his, mm-hmm. essentially whatever historical event, y- y'all know, or historical events happen against this type of, you know, this country, blah, blah, blah. So they come over here with a sense of, damn, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to build this and that here in this life, you know what I'm saying? The thinking of, and what I'm getting at is the thinking of generational. Every single time, they're thinking of generational. They're like, I'm about to pass this on to my son, my daughter, you know what I'm saying? Or it's going to stay in the family. Like, we hire them within the family. We don't do that. You know what I'm saying? We get some and we like, you know what I'm saying? That's it. Like, I'm, I'm you know, not a lot of time, not, not everybody, but we just don't do that. We don't, we don't, I don't feel like we always think, we just think about how can I get me out? And then that's it. And that's cool because yeah. you do got to get you out. But how can you get you out and then make sure that nobody else has to get in to where you had to get out of? You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah, you know, we got a lot of uh we got a lot of conversation, a lot of a lot of changing, you know what I'm saying, a lot of things to uh, to discuss as far as just how that can happen. Um a lot of people gotta come together, you know what I'm saying? A lot of minds yeah. gotta really come together when it comes down to that. But you gotta respect people like, you know what I'm saying, like like Nipsey, you know what I'm saying? Um you know, like, yeah, there's a lot of other people. I ain't really going to name them, but I'm, I'm going to say Nipsey, you know what I'm saying? Just because that's someone that definitely knew the value of buying back where you came from and putting that wealth into where you came from, you know what I'm saying? And trying to upbring the community because that's what these other people do, man. But conversation to be had, man. Y'all let us know what y'all think. And let us know what y'all think, man. Great conversation. Drop a like on the video. Scott to the content. Definitely catch this Tyrese interview. Like I said, this shit was really good. This was one of my favorite ones that Club Shay Shay did, actually. I really did. Tyrese is really introspective. Like, you really got to listen to him. And he really got, you know, you know, a lot to say. So definitely check that out as well, too. We're going to catch you on the next one. Peace.